Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. Um, freedom of speech is one of the most cherished and treasured rights that we have hold as Americans. Citizens and leaders alike enjoy the rights to speak their mind and voice their thoughts freely. While leaders have typically exercised this right of freedom responsibly, we have recently seen an increasing unsystematic tone in the political dialogue across our country and our state. Bad enough as that is, when this kind of rhetoric comes from the people that you know, from your neighbors who visit your kids in school, goes to your library, and shops at your local supermarket, that crosses a different line, a very personal one. Unfortunately for us in Plano, one of our leaders, by sharing his thoughts about Islam, that Islam does not belong in our school, that Islam, the believers of Islam in the 21st century are actually slaveholders. He crossed that line. Tom Harrison, entrusted by the voice of the people of Plano to represent all of Plano's diversity, as we look around here, he abused that voice by saying that some of us do not belong, that there's no place in Plano for us. But his hateful voice did not silence us. Our voice was louder. And we stand together today to say to Tom Harrison and anyone else who wants to do this, that we reject this kind of bigotry, discrimination, and intolerance. Plano is excellent, and it is excellent because of all of you, because of the diversity, not because of demagoguery. Our, our residents, no matter what their religion or background, deserves more than indignation. The fact that, you know, oh, you're censured, that's good. No, we are saying that we deserve leaders who are going to stand with us. Plato has made it clear that Tom Harrison is not the kind of leader that we want representing us. Mr. Harrison's voice is unworthy of speaking for us. His words are undeserving of the trust and his actions have shown, shown that his judgment has no place in public office. Right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Harrison's promotion of bigotry is bad for business, bad for family, and has no place in Plano. We condemn Mr. Harrison for voicing thoughts, which has caused so many of us pain, so much pain, but we respect his right to express them. Our expectations, however, is that Mr. Harrison will return the respect and listen to the demands of the people of Plano and step aside. Yeah. Mr. Harrison. Yeah. 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 Our citizen elected Mr. Harrison to lead. And we can all agree that Mr. Harrison sorely missed, sorely missed that opportunity. Yes. Mr. Harrison, wherever you are, you have apologized for your hurtful words. But you do not accept or acknowledge the consequences that comes with those hateful words. We cannot accept your apology when your apology puts your interest ahead of ours. Yes. 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 We hope that you do the right thing and step aside. Thank you. Right. With me is Mr. Michael Thomas and I'm going to let him say his name. Can you spell your first and last name and your title, please? My name is Dan Dacus. B is a boy, A C C H U S. I am a member of this wonderful group here that's called Our Plano, One Plano. And we are a group, as you can see, a very diverse, professional, determined, vibrant citizens who come together to say no bigotry in Plano. Thank you. Yes. My name is Michael Thomas. Uh, I can spell it if you need me to. Yes. M I C H A E L T H O M A S. Uh, and to add to that, uh, this isn't an issue of freedom of speech. Uh, we, we understand the nature of the people can say what they want to say. It's an issue of the consequences associated with that speech when you're a leader within a city, specifically in this case, the city of excellence in Plano, Texas. Uh, so, as of uh, the process of hundreds of volunteers, 
uh, over the course of the last uh, four to six weeks, we have compiled more than enough signatures. As you've seen, we've just turned those in. The number needed was around 2,800. Uh, we are over 4,400 signatures gathered. Yeah. These signatures are a representation of our community. They, are, they come from every race, every religion, every age, and it's a universal voice. And at this point, our hope is that Councilman Harrison will, will hear the voice of the people, uh, save this city and our taxpayers hundreds of thousands of dollars, and resign, as we've asked them to a number of times. Yeah. We'll be taking uh, a few uh, questions at this point, and joining me is Mr. David Smith. Uh, you know, good afternoon. Thank you for coming. Uh, David Smith, uh, standard spelling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, former city council member, but, but here today as part of the, the R Plano 1 Plano group. And we will take a, a few questions. We'll also be available for for one on one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, are, are, are there any any questions for, for the whole group? So there's enough signatures. So now what? Uh, good question. I was, yeah, I was looking for a city spokesperson, but that, I think I can speak to that. Yeah. Yes, the city secretary has five days to validate the signatures. After five days, she makes a report to the city council, which will be Monday, and there is a scheduled council meeting on Monday. Okay. Good. Hey, everybody. If if, if uh, Councilmember Harrison is recalled, uh, I know you've you've run for city council before. It, do, do you have a sense of wanting to run for an open seat if one were to be available? Uh, well, that's for Miss. That's for Bob. Oh. Um, our purpose today is the recall petition. We are focused on getting the signatures, and if Mr. Harrison does not resign in moving forward on a successful recall election. Thank you. If, if there were to be a recall election, it's my understanding it would be in, in November, um, which is close to the end of his term. Is it still worth it? Absolutely. Yeah. Wholeheartedly, re regardless of timing, this is not uh, an issue of just, well, it'd be great to have somebody out a few months earlier. This is a statement that the city of this, the people of this city uh, won't stand for leadership not representing the people of the city, and it absolutely matters. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let me commend our, our current city council for very quickly uh, acting when the uh, conduct came to life. I mean, they very promptly called a special meeting, uh, censored Mr. Harrison, asked for his resignation. Uh, you know, he did not do so at that time. It started the 45-day period uh, in, in which the citizens collected signatures. So you know, we are also acting as quickly as the process can allow. You spoke to this a little bit, but you gathered many more signatures than, than potentially required. Was that a strategy? Is that just how it ended up? Yeah, we wanted to actually reach out to all of Plano to find out what Plano thought, if they actually agreed with Mr. Harrison or how they felt about it. And we were actually really happy to find that we have a lot of really good citizens in Plano who actually do not agree with Mr. Harrison. And I think Mr. Harrison had about 40, 4,545 4, yeah, votes when he was elected. And we actually gathered as much as that in less than three weeks. People were willing to sign it and say, enough is enough, no bigotry in Plano. Mr. Harrison's uh, spokesman has said to us earlier that there's a there's a possibility they're looking into the possibility someone else may have shared that post on Mr. Harrison's page, not himself. <laughs> <laughs> What's your reaction to that? 